Uh, this is one of those pieces, uh, it's kind of near and dear to me. Um, every now and then you meet people in life that affect your life in a very drastic way. And this is about one of those people in my life, so I hope you enjoy it. In times of unimaginable grief, people will offer you their sympathies. And I appreciate the outstretched arm, but I've been in a breaking things kind of mood. I've been scarfing down the food for thought, but I've got bowels so backed up with brilliant ideas that eventually I'm gonna shit books. <laughs> books so badass they'll be banned for trying to find bravery as walking into a biker bar wearing a pink sweatshirt with a picture of a unicorn being tamed by a gnome. <laughs> Going it alone is like leaping out of a window waiting for God to catch you. And then the second before impact to rabbit becomes a fact so well established it makes you calm. I've gone from needing a shoulder to lean on to trying to calm the night and to think it had the day shift. Drink my shadow to shop the life from the back pocket of levity, bent my forehead to the kiss of brevity, hoping I can get through depression with some semblance of speed. But the live camera feed is on a 24 hour delay, so I keep reliving the worst parts of yesterday in slow motion. And someone once told me that the finer points of devotion are about the size of a pinhole. But there's millions of them. And if you can connect each dot, then you've got a diagram of what you think you thought you knew. And if you're willing to admit you know nothing, you've got a blueprint for a breakthrough. We remember everything. Right down to that first unbearable bee sting. When we learn that this tiny blue marble we call the world has rules. Rule number one, don't fuck with the bee. Unforgettable lesson brought to you by your memories. What I remember most is that during visiting hours I had to read to sick people. It was my punishment. Catholic school community service for farting on a nun's muffin. It was an accident, I swear to God. And every day would start the same way. She'd say, how you doing? I'd say, I'm doing all right. She'd say, I'm doing just fine. Point fact, the cancer taking both of her breasts. And I imagined where her cancerous breasts get thrown, two of them mourn their lost body, but she could laugh. She had a laugh like a welcome mat. Or the same kind of smile curious George would wear if he finally came out of the closet to be with the man with the big yellow hat. <laughs> She'd touch where they used to be and say, you know, it's probably good that they're gone. My ex-husband used to go about them all wrong. <laughs> she said, half the time, the only reason my nipples were erect was because they were trying to jump off my body to run away from his tongue. <laughs> I was 13 years young, thinking to myself, oh my god, you're awesome. <laughs> For me, it was all about visiting hours. Hadn't read to her, hadn't read to her in days. She was too busy teaching me how to watch horror movies and laugh. Because all the monsters Hollywood can think of just aren't as scary as letting yourself be talked into believing only half of what you are. She put a hand on each scar and say, if you really want to get scared, watch the news. It's a steeplechase. Every day, thousands of people face going to thousands of knives, but it's still more cost-effective for doctors to fail lawsuits than it is to save lives. So don't try walking a mile in my shoes. Just wear my pajamas and walk in my dreams instead. Because this isn't a deathbed. She said, I'm not gonna give up today. I'm not gonna lay here and take it. Because life is elusive as getting an orgasm from my ex, so sometimes I just gotta fake it. So if anyone ever tells you, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, give up your foolish dream. If anyone ever tells you to quit, you gotta make them wear a diaper on their mouth because man, they are just talking shit. <laughs> And she'd smile and say, You gotta let your body be the rocking chair that soothes the tired body of hope. Let your arms be the rope around the neck of self loathing. Let your skin be the clothing that keeps compassion warm in the cold streets of regret. She says, Don't pray for me yet. And I said, No problem. Religion is something I gave up on. Alone with dieting. But love. Love is a feeling that in me and through me I've often called God, so I will love you. Straight in the heart and said it's a shame 
They don't make hospital beds for two. My kids, you got your own shit to do. And I can't continue to like, be doing all right or be doing just fine. Not when there's a world full of people tired of dressing in shadows just waiting for you to shine. Now bring me my goddamn jello. She liked jello. She liked me too. During visiting hours, I had to read to the people who had no one. But this is about a woman named everyone. This isn't about death. It's about the fact that I can still feel her breath in my ear. Sometimes I can even hear her say, You are not giving up today. Because I live in a world full of seeing eye underdogs. And I'm pretty sure we're all tired of wearing our choke chains. We're tired of being treated like walking canes in a world so blind, no one can find each other. We just keep bumping into one like people are just buildings made of bone who collapse every time they're made to believe they were meant to stand alone, but you're not! Some of us can love. Some of us look like jokes. Not funny. It's just the way people keep falling for us. Yeah. Some of us are gonna get cancer. Some of us are gonna fall in our showers. But until then, you gotta shine. Because all the time you get, just visiting hours. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>